when you wake up in the morning, you are in a perfect position to what I call receive the download of all the work that your neural circuitry has been doing the night before. But if you immediately go to a sensory experience, especially a rich sensory experience of stuff scrolling by, you're actually missing the information that you processed at night. And even more importantly, that second half of the night during REM sleep is when the emotional weight of things becomes, let's say you put it on the shelf properly. Things that are important to emotionally register get put in one shelf. Things that were like the comment you got on Twitter that was triggering doesn't seem like such a big deal after a good night's sleep. And that's because that second half of sleep is actually when you re-experience these things, but your body can't secrete adrenaline. It's kind of an internal form of therapy or even trauma therapy. Rapid eye movement or REM is also known as dream sleep or paradoxical sleep. Some people believe that it is the stage of sleep where we dream, which is somewhat true. However, REM is also involved in a host of important functions from brain development to emotional processing. During REM sleep, your brain processes emotions, skills, or whatever you can learn throughout the day, commits some of them to memory, and decides what to delete. Memory consolidation also takes place during REM sleep. And that's why people who don't get that sleep are very, you know, they're easily agitated. They feel like the world is crushing down on them. So when I wake up in the morning, I want to receive ideas that I want to learn from my learning. And if you take in new information, you are not in a position to do that. And 60 minutes is a tough one. So I give myself two no-goes for the 60 minute block if I can do it. And I'll tell you, a lot of mornings I fail, Tom. I don't do it. You know, there are mornings where I get enticed or worse, I find myself reflexively picking up the yeah. phone without having made the conscious yeah. decision. Maximize exposure to sunlight in the first half of the day. Number one thing for just making sure that you sleep well that night. And then mm. limiting artificial light exposure by dimming lights from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Exposure to sunlight can increase testosterone levels and estrogen levels in both men and women. If possible, you should avoid looking at your phone right after waking up and instead go out and view some sunlight. Very few people do those two things, but they have an outsized effect on sleep. And there's a really nice study out of Israel this last year that showed that if you had people, this was men and women, go outside for 20 minutes, three times a week and try and expose as much of their skin as they possibly could to sunlight while still being decent, all right? That it raised testosterone and estrogen significantly. Why? Because skin isn't just an organ to, you know, tattoo and protect our organs. It's a organ that actually functions as an endocrine, as a hormone organ, that, like vitamin D, right? Mm -hmm. This kind of thing. Getting sunlight on your body, getting sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day, increases testosterone and estrogen, increases feelings of well-being, improves sleep, et cetera. It's like all the things we know, right? but people are, th are finally catching on to this. And they, even though people always say, well, can't I just crank up my phone really bright in the morning and sit there? There's always this kind of negotiating. <laughs> like you're, like you're not gonna out negotiate the sun. Right. right. I mean, and then people think, oh, the sun, that's really kind of woo technology. No, we evolved to get sunlight during the day and to avoid light at night. If you want to get the most out of your day, you should try to avoid consuming caffeine too early in the morning. Huberman suggests that you should wait for at least 90 to 120 minutes. By delaying your caffeine intake after waking up, you can avoid the so-called afternoon crash. The ideal morning activity would be hydrating and exercising right after you wake up. By following this ideal morning activity, you'll feel more energetic and active throughout the day. Moreover, if you want to have some caffeine before exercising, you may still do so, but at the risk of draining your energy by the afternoon. So one thing that you can do is when you wake up in the morning, don't ingest caffeine for the first 90 minutes or so. Like really push that off so that the adenosine and adenosine receptor interactions can all take place and dissipate. Then you drink caffeine. And what you'll find is that if normally you would crash around two or three in the afternoon, you don't experience that crash anymore because the caffeine wears off, but there isn't a lot of adenosine there to bind the receptor. There are good reasons to stay in bed in the morning, but once those are completed, then staying in bed, curtains drawn, passively scrolling on social media, they're in bed, they're, they're not getting enough light or they just artificial light, or they're trying to get the sunlight through the window. Terror they are then going and sitting and getting into like hip, you know, hip flexor contraction. They're drinking coffee too early in the day. They aren't getting into any kind of movement, but it's mostly about the sort of randomization of activities. They're sort of making a cup of coffee while texting, um, not getting sunlight, you know, then they're scattering that in with like a little bit of work, but then something hits that's stressful and they're diverting their attention. They're sort of building in this attention deficit like disorder. And I have to say, even though I describe my routine accurate, my morning routine accurately, if I were to really optimize it, and I, I've done this from time to time, I would get up, I would hydrate, and I would immediately exercise. I would use that early, you know, peaking of the cortisol response that comes 
happens with waking to get the body into action because that's going to generate its own dopamine and adrenaline response. Anytime I've worked out really early, like if I have a flight and then, you know, and then moved into the other components of my day, I find that I feel better all day long. I also will say if I work out really early, maybe between 7 and 8 a.m., well, then my first meal might land at 9 a.m. Yeah. So, you, you know, you need to be flexible with some of these things, but the general principles uh, apply. Will you follow Huberman's advice and improve your morning routine? Let us know in the comments section below. If you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future uploads. Until then, take care.